Hi there, it's Evan from Checkbox and what I'll be doing for you in this video is taking you through the studio and showing you how easy it is to build a module. So let's get started. Um, I think what I'll do for you today is build for you a, say, nifty budgeting tool. Uh, let's call it, yeah, nifty, let's say NBT and version one. And let's just say uh, for the purposes of demo. All right, so let's jump into the studio, which is our visual drag and drop app builder. So um, let's just, I'm just gonna populate this with a set of text I've already copied from before. Um, yeah, cool, let's call it the nifty budgeting tool. So what I'm doing here is actually just creating the start page in our application. Um, and let's say in the first instance, I wanna you know capture some information. So it's as simple as, dragging and dropping a field here, I've literally just created a form page that um, the start page routes to. Now, uh, let's say we want to capture personal information here. So open up the form builder and I want to first say something like, um, your personal information is important to us. Okay. Uh, next, let's say I want to capture their name, so I'll throw in a name, uh, a text field, so name. Uh, I also want to know their company, so let's also do that, company. And one last thing, let's say I want their role as well. So um, let's say role, and we want, uh, let's say, consultant, manager, and let's say director. And I can add another one if I want, let's just say partner. Cool, so just like that, I've created a form in the actual application. Uh, and let's just do a quick test. So if I hit the preview button, there's the nifty budging tool start page. If I hit start, there's the form I've just created. So that all seems to be working fine. That's good. We can continue. So let's say after the form, I want them to uh, list all the items they wish to obtain in this budget. Um, let's call it, uh, you know, list all the items you expect to procure uh, this year. All right, now item. What I can do here is actually put in a, a tip. Let's say, you know, the, the word procure isn't always clear to everyone. So I can say, you know, definition of procure. Uh, procure is to obtain a service or good, okay? Now what that's essentially done is created a tip, which I'll just show you in a second, um, which helps you, which guides you through the process and, and helps you answer the questions on, on uh, during the runtime. So let's add another one. Um, let's just say, you know, just so you can see, definition of year. Um, year is from, say, uh, let's say we're doing financial year. So year is from uh, 1st of July to 31st of June. All right. So now what I can do is, uh, let's just put in one more element here. Let's say, um, uh, let's throw another form field, okay? Well, actually, let's, let's, let's throw in a yes, no field first. So we'll say, um, are you assigned a budget? Okay, so what we can do is say, well, if they say yes, let's proceed with the process. If they say yes, let's proceed with the process. Uh, but if they say no, then let's let's send them to a statement that says um, something like uh, consult your financial manager. Okay, uh, and then in the form, if they do progress, we'll ask them for the for the budget. So we might say something like, uh, "What is your budget in Australian dollars?" Okay, and let's hit save. Great. Cool, so let's have a look again at how that's looking so far. So we go through here, there's the field. So let's just put in say, uh, Apple Inc. Uh, whoops, that's, that's the company. Let's say uh, I'm working there, Evan, uh, and I'm a manager. Okay, great. So now it says list all the items you wish to procure. Here are the tips that we built in earlier. So if I click into them, it gives me the definition of procurement. And yeah, again, I can put items in there. Uh, let's just put in some filler text for now. If I hit next, are you assigned a budget? Yes or no? If I hit no, it goes to consult your financial manager. If I hit back and go yes, it takes me to what is your budget? Okay, so it's coming along quite nicely. 
Um, let's make it a bit more complicated. Let, let's say um, I want to throw in... Um, Actually, let's say I want to make the app a bit more personalized. Now, what we can do is actually hit this button here that says Show Logic. And when I do that, it actually shows you all of the variables inside the entire application that you can actually reference, access, and inject anywhere else in the application. So let's say I want to be more personalized. So I want to actually reference them by their name, which is, in this case, you can see Text2. Now, if you're unsure about you know what Text2 actually is, you can always click Open the Form Builder and you know here it says text 2 is referencing the name and the whole tab system makes it very easy to kind of I guess jump back and forth uh, and, and access that so what I can do here is say you know thanks text 2 list all the items you wish to procure this year so what that's going to do is pu pull in the variable during runtime that the person inputs into that field into here and, and, and say you know it would say something like thanks Evan all right um, and we'll see that in a second. Let's just jump and build a table. Okay, so I'll show you our table builder, which is your way of kind of building uh, very complicated calculators um, and ways of representing information. Uh, let's call this uh, the budgeting uh, calculator. All right, so I'll go in um, and it looks like this. It's model of Excel. And let's say I, I want to put here an uh, item. Um, and <clears throat> what I'm going to do is this table is very smart in the sense that it can actually pull in the list that I've put in uh, here that, that the user has created. So here you can see it's list six. All right. So what I'm going to do is in the table, I'm going to go and type in list six. Now, the smart thing about behind this uh, functionality is that you don't actually know what the size of that list is until the user runs through, right? So the list can be a size of, you know, three items, or it could be 10, it could be 100, you don't know that. And what this table does is it dynamically reacts to the size of the list as it goes through um, the runtime. Uh, I'll show you what that means in a second. So let's say um, beyond item, I also want price. I also want quantity. Um, and I want more fields, so let, you, we can just click on this and, and kind of expand it. Let's say, um, I don't know, but, you know, we can also right click and go insert here. Let, let's do it like uh, like this. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have price, quantity, uh, priority, and also uh, uh, total. Okay, um, down here I'm going to have say uh, subtotal. I'm gonna have um, let's chuck in some GST at uh, ten percent, and also the grand total. All right, now. What I can do is actually change the cell type. So let's make this a number type. Uh, let's also make this a number type. Priority, let's make it a drop down um, with it being high or it can be uh, low. In the total, what I want to do is basically do sum of, um, I guess, uh, well, not sum of, sorry. It'd be uh, B2 uh, multiplied by C2. Okay, that price multiplied by quantity equals total. The subtotal is going to be equal to, um, I guess, the sum of uh, E2. Okay, and the GST is going to be, uh, you know, B, sorry, what is it? E4, really testing my Excel skills now, uh, multiplied by 0 0.1. Okay, so that's going to take 10% um, of this cell here, E4. And the grand total would be then the sum of uh, E4 and E5, okay? <clears throat> so that's going to be the subtotal uh, in addition to the GST. Perfect. So that's my table built just like that. Oh, one more thing. What I'm going to do is right-click this. Sorry, not right-click. Just click on that and make that a header row to give it a bit of styling to say this is the header. All right, now now let's jump through. So let's, let's go back to the um, studio. Perfect. And I'm just going to throw a report at the end for now. I'm just going to throw it out at the end uh, and connect it up. Now let's just um, jump into the report builder and I'll show you how it looks like. It's, it's basically your, your budgeting report. Okay. Now the budgeting report or our, or our table build, uh, sorry, our document builder is our document automation piece. And it allows you to basically uh, automate both the content inside a document as well as the display of that content as well. So, you know, in this context, let's let's just create a header. Let's call it um, 
uh, you know, budgeting report summary. Okay, I've made a bold. Let's let's make it a bit bigger and give it a bit of color. Um, and let's call you say private and confidential. Um, well, maybe we'll keep it bold. We'll make it a bit smaller and change the color to gray. All right, great. So that's just all styling. Um, now let's say I want to create a, a text like this. Report was prepared. Four. Uh, what I can do here is similar to what I showed you before, which is actually um, pulling in variables from another process. So I want to pull in the company name. I think I, it was text three, but let's just check. Yeah. So text three is the company name. So this report was prepared for text three. Okay. So what's going to do is basically again pull in that variable. Um, and you can see we've also built in design validation. So if I go and click, say, uh, 39 by accident, it actually tells me, well, that variable doesn't actually exist in the studio. Um, so, you know, you'd go and correct that. Now I can create rules as well. You know, so I've, I've created another rule and I say here, um, let's say, you know, let's keep it simple. For now, let's just say you are within budget. Okay, within budget. Now, you would be within budget, of course, if the grand total was uh, less than or equal to your proposed budget, your, your, your allocated budget. So let's go and check out what that logic would be. So our budget was in num10, and uh, our grand total was in uh, table 6 E6. All right, so we can do, you're within budget if table 6 E6 is less than or equal to num10. Okay, it's simple as that. Now, what I can also do is create another rule and say uh, you are exceeding budget and the rule would obviously be the inverse, which is when it is greater than. All right, and just like that, I'm done. I've built my budgeting tool, so let's go and have a look at how it actually looks like at the end user end. Great, let's go, preview. So here's the intro page, hit start. Uh, my name's Evan Wong, the company, uh, let's just say Apple Incorporated. My role is I've been promoted, I'm a director now. <laughs> Next, you can see, thanks Evan Wong, it's pulled in that variable from before, the tips are still there. Uh, let's say I wanna buy a table, I want to buy a chair and I also want to buy, uh, I don't know, like a lamp. It says, are you assigned a budget? Let's say yes. My budget is 500 Australian dollars. So here you see the table that we built earlier with the actual items that I listed populated on the left. Um, what I'm going to do is type in the price. Let's say a table is $10 and I want three of them. It's of high priority. You can see the calculator kicking in already. Uh, the chair, let's say, is five dollars. I want ten of them, and it's a low priority. And the lamp, uh, I want uh, two of them at thir uh, sorry, two dollars at thirteen of them, and let's say high. Okay, so my grand total here is sixteen dollars sixty, uh, which is obviously less than five hundred. So I should be within budget. Let's go next. So here we have the transcript, which tracks all the questions that you've been asked, your responses, as well as any tables, right? So there it is. Now if I hit view report, if I've built it correctly, let's pray that it does, it should actually show, there we go. You are within budget. This report was prepared for Apple Incorporated and you are within budget. Um, it doesn't say that you exceeded budget because that condition that I had before, the rule that I set wasn't satisfied. So building applications is as simple as that. And of course, if regulation changes or if you think that you made a mistake, it's as simple as coming back to here and making those edits um, and, and it can be rendered and published and versioned uh, all instantly. So uh, no need for any sort of developers uh, or system architects at all. It's, uh, um, it's very powerful and very flexible and empowering in that sense. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, but if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out and contact me. You can contact me directly at evan at checkbox.ai. Um, so feel free to email me. But otherwise, thanks for watching and um, I hope you have a great day.